All right, welcome to another episode from The Chart Reader. So honestly, I was not planning on re-recording NVOS today. I thought the day was gonna go a lot different than it did. Today was a very interesting day, all right? And it's all because of the shape of this candle, all right? There are, there are so many different trading strategies out there. One of them for real is people only move their money based on how these candles look. All right, there are names for like this one. There are names for like two in a row that look a certain way. Like I, I don't know that stuff, all right? But, 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 the one thing that I take from that strategy is the doji. It's the doji. It's the doji. I respect the doji a lot. And, and that's what we got today. We got it on a critical line. Um, I think it's worth talking about again today. So that's actually why I'm doing this. The other one I'm going to cover on this one is a similar spelled one. It's NVAX. I guess it's not as similar, just the N at the beginning. But um, I, 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 it caught my eye today. And I think it's an interesting one. And I, I actually thought it was um, worth bringing here. But um, yeah, I am excited to talk about these two, but before we go any further and I give you more of my thoughts and opinions, what are we going to do today? Same thing we always do, right? We'll take a look at the daily and the weekly to see how these things are setting up short term. We have our five moving averages. There are horizontal support and resistance lines that I do draw manually myself. Occasionally you'll see these diagonal trend lines as well. Um, and then when we are done up here, we'll use the MACD, RSI, and volume as our lower indicators. Hey, really quickly, if you can please subscribe to these subscribe to this channel, comment on the videos, good or bad, share this thing online with your friends. Look, anything you can do helps me so, so much with these YouTube algorithms, but for real, just being here and giving me your time, oh, I appreciate that so, so much, all right? For real, if you can share these, it does me the best because I am not that good at it, but again, Thank you for being here, all right? So look, let's talk about NVOS. And look, I'm gonna start with what I said yesterday, all right? I had a $50, a $50, Jesus Christ, um, a 50 cent immediate target, all right? This thing is 55, this is what the line says. Again, my lines are less about being perfect and being close enough, right? So you're not gonna hear me like talk about this thing closing on this line because of like cockiness and showing off, right? Like it, it, it's, it's more to just give us a general guidance and then adjust accordingly, right? But yeah, in my head, I thought we were gonna see a pretty nice little climb to 50. We have very little resistance and, and you know, it just, it, it, I think I expected a little more. And there's two immediate things that jump out and I'm not zooming in again for, for a specific reason, all right? The first thing that jumps out is something that I say so, so often. This gap fill border, all right? That's definitely not a technical term. That's just me talking to you like regular humans, right? Like the gap fill border, basically what I say is the, is the, the, the wall between the U S and Mexico, right? Like the wall between down here and up here, right? The gap right here, that gap border is hard to break, especially when you see us breaking these bigger candles and bigger clusters and like getting over the 200, like these are harder things that it seems like we're breaking. We just dropped a huge, huge candle on it, right? Like it looked like we would confirm and run. Hey, we didn't confirm today. All right. And, and it really is because these gap fill borders are hard. And you'll hear me say that across any ticker. I'm telling you, that is not NVOS specific. You put that in your back pocket. All right. It's frustrating at times too, but it is what it is. All right. Just believe me when I say that. Okay. Um, that's the first thing that came to mind. The second thing that came to mind simply is volume. All right, we definitely make a ridiculous drop from 300 million down to 81 million. Again, there are there are so, so many stocks that would kill to have 81 million shares, right? But when you're giving up more than 66%, right? Like simple math, we're dropping from three to one, less than one, right? So like we gave up two, we've given up more than 66% of the volume, but we basically end at a zero. Man, that's that's not too bad. All right, like if volume was better, things would have been a lot different, but it wasn't. There were a couple other stocks that I saw just kind of take take the focus and it is what it is, all right? But overall, um, those two things were the immediate thing that caught my eye. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is today's candle itself, all right? There were moments where people thought it was gonna run. 
go to the 34 and higher, right? There were moments where people thought it was gonna drop. I saw it go to 27. I was wondering if it was actually gonna go to 26 myself. People in the Discord know why I care about that number, right? But um, yeah, it's, 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 it, 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 it is a doji. Like it's not as, and again, I'm not here to pretend that like I'm a candle mover. So, Hey, if I'm wrong, believe me, like you're not going to offend me by saying it, but I don't care if it's this thin or that, like to me, what I see today is uncertainty. People thought it was going to go high. People thought it was going to go low. They basically end it with no gain. They're like, you know what? Let's wait for tomorrow. Let's see what tomorrow does. And, and again, I'm at a place where tomorrow will either take us up closer to that 50 that I was expecting, or hey, we actually might be coming down and closing a little closer, 26, 25, 24. I don't think we'll go any lower than 24. I don't think we'll lose this entire candle. I obviously will personally be sad. I do have some money in this thing right now. I can't pretend I don't. But yeah, I think I'd start to get worried if we eat this entire candle. If 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 if, if it comes to here-ish, hey, I'm all right with that. 50% is something I'm willing to hold. Losing the whole thing would be scary. I will I will say that. The eight moving average is all the way down here. I, I don't think, you know, coming down to 19, maybe around 20, if I had to guess where this thing was gonna go up, right? It's not like a super steep line. Like I, I can see this being here tomorrow, right? Around 20. Um, I do believe if 24 doesn't hold, it will be a very fast drop to 20. And 24 to 20 is actually a 20% move, right? Every two cents is 10%. So that for real, when I say I would be scared of losing, excuse me, losing 24, I would be scared because I see a very fast drop below this 23 line all the way down to 19, all right? So um, don't forget, this is a cluster of five lines. I only have five lines, right? I call moving average cluster tornadoes because it looks like you go up, looks like you go down, looks like you go up, looks like you go down, looks like you go up, you come back down. You might even, like this This cluster of five can do whatever it wants. And there are, there are regular examples I show, all right? Palantir, look like it was gonna go up, came back down. Look like it was gonna go up, came back down. Look like it was gonna go up, came back down. Like, and again, all five lines really tight, right? The other one I always show is, is HUSA. This one did it for months. Look at the months it did it for. All five lines just up and down, up and down, up and down, right? Like you, you can't, I'm telling you, I, I, I swear, NVOS is nothing more than four letters right next to each other, all right? And and I I, I don't ever let a, a single ticker's hype take me away from the realities, right? Again, I see it looking like it wants to escape. I've just sadly seen sillier things. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm stressing this 24 cent as much as I really wanna stress this potential for 50. All right, because I'm telling you, the day after the doji don't care about what we think. It just kind of shows. And this again, in my head was a doji. This was the day after. This was a doji. This was the day after. We have seen violent days after doji. We've seen violent ones down too. You know what I mean? So um, yeah, just this, it's a coin flip. Where are we post-market? We're holding. People, I'm telling you, there is so much uncertainty right now on, on what this is going to do tomorrow, all right? MACD does not look bad at all. MACD is still diverging, right? What does diverging mean? Just the two lines going away, right? I'm still seeing green going away from the red, all right? The issue starts to become this RSI. Yesterday's worry was 71, right? We were at 71 yesterday. You can see it over there, RSI 14 sitting at 71. 71, I thought was a little too close to 80. And I was thinking to myself, oh man, like are we, are we gonna just go up a little bit and then kind of calm down? Now, I'm kind of wondering, hey, are we about to slip? Is the red, is the green gonna go below the red? Is the red gonna start diverging up? Is that gonna make me start to worry a little bit more about 24 than be excited about 25? I'm telling you, when I say I'm, I'm, I'm not here to say I know what tomorrow's gonna do. 
even if I was to use my better indicators, which I obviously am, right? We're looking at chart readers. I have the one and the two for, for personal use, right? But um, dude, the doji stresses uncertainty. Tomorrow should tell the truth. I honestly wouldn't even be surprised if we got one more doji. All right. The last thing I want to say, because again, I'm not a candle trader, but some people care about the wick. Some people might say they don't like the fact that we didn't go as high as yesterday went. All right. This one obviously went as high as 35. Today, we only went as high as 34. For me, I actually don't care about that too much. I'm glad the body of the doji is as high as it is. As it gets lower and lower on the candle, I start to get worried and worried. Like if we see a doji here tomorrow, I actually will probably start to hit eject. All right. I, I, I at least, I at least would start to thin it out to make sure it doesn't get any like bloodier than it needs to get. You get what I'm saying? But um, right now the doji is at least still in a better place in my eyes, right? Just, just my head, right? But um, I'm still seeing a cluster of five that I think we need to, to validate the escape from. And I think that means breaking 29. I wish I had a better line to put just as like what I think I would call that validation number. Maybe it's, it's it, this is a good one. Maybe 33 is the number because it's basically 50% of that red candle. I never make supports on a red line. So I mean on a red candle, so I'm not gonna do that for this video, but that might be an interesting back pocket one. 35, 34, I think 33 is the, the number it's trying to beat actually so i think this was a good view on nvos again i don't think i need to discuss the the weekly too much look this weekly still looks good all right it, it really really does actually like we broke the the 50 yes uh, yesterday last week this week is seemingly confirming it right as long as silly things don't happen the next two days if you're patient enough, this weekly is actually still looking good. And hey, we're already doing better volume than last week. And we still have two days left. You can see it already. This was one full week. This was five days of trading full week. And it got to 333 million. We're already at 360 with a couple days left, right? So this is this good weekly chart. It actually is. And I'm glad I took a couple seconds to at least talk about this thing. But yeah, tomorrow's daily is, is, is I think this will separate the, the risk tolerances to say the least. All right. So NVOS, I think that's an interesting one. All right. NVAX. I clearly, I don't remember if I've made a video here. Or I had this line on the personal side, but um, clearly NVAX is something I've either, like I said, I don't want to repeat it, but um, this line, I don't, I don't remember where it was from. I know I didn't draw it today. I can tell you that much. Um, I hope you can see why NVAX is catching my eye and, and the immediate thing is right here. We are actually over the 200 moving average and I liked how high we closed above it. That said, you hear me saying it all the time. I'm going to say it right here. One day means nothing. All right. This 7%, I'm glad it wasn't a bigger, sillier number in all honesty, because I think it would have been easier to kind of get distracted. But Dude, doing it once is nice. Doing it twice and more makes me believe this thing might sustain and go. And what I like about this NVAX thing is we're starting to get near some gaps, all right? And if if this nine breaks, the next place, the next place we go is 12. And that's a really healthy double-digit move right there. And you can see it. There's a whole mess of nothing. And then red, 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 green, 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 red, 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 red. I'm hoping it's actually a quick green, 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 green up. So I like this immediate. Do I think think we're going to go all the way to 16. I think if you just watched the NVOS line uh, video, you'll, you'll know it. This gap fill border ain't easy to break. So I'm, I am not having $16 dreams just yet. I'm actually a little hesitant to draw it in all honesty. Cause again, I, you see the lines, you start to, you believe it gets there, right? Like the chart readers dude thinks it's going to go cause he has the line. Right. But I, I think there's good reason to put $12 dreams here and it starts to become these lower indicators. Right, I'm loving the MACD. MACD has been positive for a bit and it looks like it's ready to diverge on up and go, 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 right? I'm liking the RSI. Yes, yeah, 71's a little high, but hey, we've still got room for 80, right? I think there's enough room to take me from this to this before I start worrying it's at 80 plus, right? And hey, looky, 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 we were in the high, high 80s not that long ago. So this thing knows what to do when it gets to the 80s as well. And I think my favorite part simply is the volume. 
slow and steady up, up, up from here, as well as just in general, a nice, really good two and a half weeks of, of buying compared to selling. So um, there's a lot, I like it, I like it, I like it, I like it, right? There's only so many indicators we have on this thing. The biggest thing to talk about, and again, as excited as I was, we gotta bring the realities into the realities. This 200 moving average has been an impossibility since late 2021, all right? Since December 2021, that was the last time we were anywhere near this purple line, all right? The distance from here to here is 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 a lot too. So don't don't pretend that like we were kind of close there, right? So the one cool thing is look at all the there were some battles with the 100 here, there were some battles with the 100 here, battles with the 100 here, holding and bat like I do believe we've taken the 100 moving average on Envax. I do. I think that this is broken for real actually. We do it, we do it, we do it we've done it in my head right I it is all about this 200 and really I think this is a beautiful entry place if you're not in just yet either if we can start getting into that near 10 look even going from 10 to 12 is still a 20% move right so like the, there's nothing wrong with waiting right and and I think hitting this or getting there is where are we at after hours Holding, I'll take holding, I will. I like that a lot actually. So um, again, I think there's there's there are things to like here. More than anything, it's all about that battle of the 200. Let me look at the, the weekly. Oh man, look at this thing. Look at this thing. Struggling, struggling, struggling with the eight and the 20, all right? We are now maybe trying to make the move from the, again, the, the way it works is break the eight, go to the 20, break the 20, go to the 50, break the 50, go to the 100. Do not have $50 dreams on this thing, all right? Just because we haven't even broken the 50 just yet, right? So don't don't undermine this $10 number right here, all right? Um, that said, I think there's reason to believe that, that I, I like this. I do, actually. I think I might even call this a juicy setup. I'll be honest with you. I think it's just, it needs to confirm tomorrow and then I would for sure, sure call it a juicy setup. But yeah. NVAX, I like NVOS, man, that's a gamble, but the weekly still looks good on it. So, hey, as always, let me know your thoughts and opinions. Otherwise, hey, thank you, thank you, thank you.